uh, one guy who won't be playing in the NFL's 100th season, at least not at the beginning of it, Rob Gronkowski. It, it had been teased for a week or two that his announcement regarding the next chapter in his career would be coming on Tuesday, and it came, and he's going to be a CBD oil pitch man, and he's going to try to get the NFL to take CBD oil off the list of banned substances. But beyond the rollout of this new business venture by Gronk, he talked about some things that require some careful attention and thought, especially in light of the Andrew Luck retirement, Chris. The first thing we're going to play, Rob Gronkowski at a press conference yesterday explaining why he walked away, and he sounds a lot like Andrew Luck when he reflects on the the reality of of the wear and tear of being a football player. Here's Gronk from Tuesday. I want to be clear to my fans. I needed to recover. I was not in a good place. Football was bringing me down, and I didn't like it. And I was losing that joy in life, like the joy. I'm sorry right now, but, oh, (laughs) dang, let me, oh. I really was, and I was fighting through it. And I knew what I signed up for, and I knew what I was fighting through, and I knew I just have to fix myself. You know, we rarely, if ever, have seen that kind of emotion from Rob Gronkowski. As I've always marveled at his ability to retain that enthusiasm, that kind of over-the-top goofiness, even though he's had injury after injury and surgery after surgery. He never got jaded. He never got cynical. But, Chris, he got to the point where he had enough. And uh, that emotion, I think, tells us everything we need to know. He just decided at this point he cannot do it. Well, uh, yes, it, it's just it's real in the NFL. And, you know, some guys can can battle through it. Other guys, it wears on you. And when you have an injury, you know, history and laundry list of injuries, like Rob Gronkowski, you said it, you know, in the first hour. He's like operation. I mean, he truly is. I mean, if we looked at it, it it's uh, unreal how many things he's had surgery on. Same with Andrew Luck to where – you know, think about it. Put yourself in his shoes. Not only you're getting up in the morning, you're going, oh, gosh, I can barely walk to the bathroom and take my first pee of the morning. And, you know, you're starting to get going and you can't. Everything's hurting. Yeah, I had to throw it out there because that's the first thing you do in the morning when you're a man. OK, and you're getting in the car and you're going, oh, my gosh, I can barely get in there. Yes. What do you want to say? Well, I, I look, I haven't done extensive research on this. I think it's also the first thing you do in the morning when you're a woman as well. Well, yes, but, yes. But go ahead. Yes, I, <laughs> yeah. you're right. It's all people, all humans. You're exactly <laughs> Right. Uh, my wife certainly does. I know that. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm sure go. she'll be glad to hear that. Either way, <laughs> you have that. But then think about feeling like that. Okay. And now you're going and okay. Now you got to practice football. You're going like, holy crap. I can't, I could barely get in my car today. I'm going to practice football or you're not doing any football at all. And you're just constantly rehabbing and rehabbing and rehabbing. And then anytime I hear not in a good place or a dark place, I start to think about opioids you know you're taking things to make your body feel better okay the vicodins of the world and and the anti-inflammatories also that mess with your stomach and do all these other issues to where you know it can just wear on you as in a whole really and uh, i understand where a guy like gronk's coming from and for gronk there was one specific injury that he suffered in what would be at least for now his final nfl game he spoke at length about the injury how he reacted to it and how he dealt with it in the weeks following the conclusion of the 2018 season. Here's more from Gronk on that quad injury he suffered in Super Bowl 53. In the Super Bowl, uh, about a couple minutes into the second quarter, I caught a pass on the left side, cut over, and the linebacker took me right out, right here in my quad. I flipped in the air, and I knew my quad was was done. But... Um, I knew, I knew it, was, it was right there and then. I was like, last game, Super Bowl game, just give it all you have. So, you know, the game went on and everything, and I got done with the game. I could barely walk. Now I could barely walk. I'm at the after party. I go to after party like this. I sit down, and I'm just chilling all day, like the rest of the night till like 3 a.m. I try to go to bed. I slept for five minutes that night. I couldn't even think. I was in tears in my bed after a Super Bowl victory. It didn't make that much sense to me. And then for four weeks, I couldn't even sleep for more than 20 minutes a night after a Super Bowl win. And I was like, damn, like, this sucks. Like, it didn't feel good. Man. Yeah, I mean, look, it gives you an idea what these guys have to do. He's fighting back a lot of tears still, yeah. 
and, and here's the hit he took in Ooh. the second quarter of of the Super Bowl, and and he knew, you know. But the, when you know it's your last game, you want to go out on top. You 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 do it, and you suck it up. And and uh, look, he he knew, I think he knew at the time he he had. It, it's not going to get any better. You fight through it, and you're going to have those weeks of pain, sleeping 20 minutes a night. And uh, and look, with all that said. Guys deal with that all the time, and when they feel better, they forget about it, and they decide they want to come back and play. But we need to be more sensitive to this cycle that that most, if not all, NFL players deal with, where you have the injury, you have the pain, you have the surgery, you have the recovery, you bust your butt to get yourself back to the point where you can go play, and you go back and play, and you accept the reality that you're probably going to be right back there again. And then the cycle continues, and uh, it's amazing that you can shut that out and embrace and welcome the reality that you're going to be right back in that dark place again yeah. dealing with an injury. Yeah, it, it, well, he wants to play football. I think that's why he's so emotional, you know, when he's sitting up there. I mean, first off, he wasn't just sucking it up in that game. He's been sucking it up for the last six years of his life. I mean, that's really what he's been doing. Elbows, backs, plates and certain body parts. I mean, he's got it all going on. He's been dealing with everything. And I think there was a, a little bit of a culmination of why you saw him so emotional is because he knows he loves football, but he also knows like, wow, I, I, I just, it, everything took its toll on me and I lost my love of the fo- of football in general because he's just worrying about surviving on a daily basis. And that's just a hard way to live. And I'm just, you know, I'm glad that I think people are getting a little inside look after Andrew Luck and this just to what it takes at times to get through an NFL season. The sport is more brutal than ever. I know people go, oh, well, there's more rules to protect than ever before. But I don't give a damn. Baloney. Okay, the world has changed. Guys play defense to end in eighth grade and they don't do anything else. And they play defense to end until the end of time. They don't play basketball. They don't play baseball. They don't even play another position in football. They just go, I'm a defense end. And that's all they work on. And they lift weights and they run 40s and they get their nutrition. And the game has become so physical and fast and violent because everybody has become so specialized in the sport that, yes, the rules might be easier than back in my dad's day or even early in my career career but the game now is is as violent as it's ever been because there's more specimens on the field on a week-to-week basis and with all that said the specimen who is rob gronkowski still not closing the door on retirement and chris yesterday what he said the closest indication yet that it truly is not over for rob gronkowski here he is yesterday on the question of whether he will play football again If I have the desire to play football again, if I feel passionate about football again, if I'm feeling like I need to be out there on the field, I will go back to football. But as of right now, that is not the case. It could be the case in six months. It could be the case in two years. It could be the case in three years. It could be the case in three months. But I truly don't see it in the foreseeable future in like a week or a month. And I'm going to keep it out. No. You know, he, he started racking up the various possible timelines. It could be the case in six months. It could be the case in two years. It could be the case in three years. And then he throws in, it could be the three case months. in three months. Right. That's the one to watch, Chris, because yeah. that's what we said all along. September rolls around. He sees the sixth banner get raised. He sees football move on without him. He sees other guys out there doing what he used to do. And he starts thinking, man, ah, oh, boy, I kind of miss this. And, uh, you know, some point in October, he starts putting the weight back on. Some point around Halloween, Tom Brady gives him a call and says, boy, we could really use you. Some point before Thanksgiving, Gronk is back. I, I, I feel like it's all lining up for that to happen, and we shouldn't be surprised when it does. I know, Mike. I mean, I, I think I was with you all the way there, and I'm still, I don't, you know, I'm, I think it's cer- certainly a possibility, but I think after seeing that press conference and him talking there, I think it's going to be a full year out at least. I do. Uh, I just think still in his mind, the misery of pain and the, the dealing with the injuries and everything is still going to be too fresh to where – I, I hear you. He might have the itch, but I think that's going to weigh too heavily on him, him remembering right after the Super Bowl last year and some of the things to where it's not quite erased out of his memory yet to where he goes, okay, I'm ready. Let me get out there and, and get playing football again. Uh, I, I used to be like you, but I think it's going to be at least one year.
But I think if he can fast forward through the regular season and yeah. get to the games that matter, right? right? He's got until the Tuesday after Week 13 to unretire. You you know you reduce, and I say this all the time with quarterbacks: don't take hits because every hit you take increases the likelihood that that next hit's going to be the one that injures you. Well, if you can reduce the total number of hits you take in the season because you didn't play the first 10 games. Then you come out and you let it go and you're pursuing yeah. that immortality that comes with getting the other ring. Hey, when they've got that getting that ring has to be euphoria for the players, right? Especially the Patriots players. Cause that's the only day of the year you're allowed to have fun <laughs> other than the night after you win the Super Bowl, the night you get the ring. Those are the only two occasions out of 365 days, 366 in the leap year that you're allowed to have fun. So I, I think the lure of yeah. doing that again, getting another ring and getting the Patriots number seven, they want, they won't say it publicly. They want number seven badly because that puts them past the Steelers and in first place all time. And, and I, I'm not going to be surprised if, especially if they sputter with the guys they have at tight end, and they quite likely will. Tom Brady makes that phone call, and uh, it's basically like putting a bat signal in the air. Gronk's going to be back. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, I, I'm, I don't know if I feel as strongly about it now, but either way, hey, he does have three rings. I understand what you're saying, getting to four is special. Regardless, you're right about the euphoria of the ring. It's my, it was my dream in life. I didn't care if I had to you know, clean cleats or hold a clipboard or go work in a, a cubby hole in New England. I wanted a Super Bowl ring badly in my life, so I can certainly understand you know, the drive to get it. Hey, you gave an internal organ for the quest for a splint. All right, somebody sent me a <laughs> ring then. Damn it, let's go. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.